proves that it's important to have good leadership skills in order to be successful. But what you might not realize is that there's more than one way to be a good leader. Being a good leader is more than just being able to communicate with others and being able to make decisions. While those are really important aspects of this, there's more than one way and different ways to go about applying these skills. The three main leadership styles are going to be authoritarian, laissez-faire, and democratic. Uh, in life, everyone, everyone sets goals for themselves. Everyone in here has at least a few goals for themselves, and they're all different from each other, but they all have one thing in common, and that's wanting to be successful. And, there's a, and having that drive to be successful is a very great quality to have, and there's a few key points in getting there. For starters, finding out what type of leader you are and the leadership style that works best for you is, will help you in the future and really help you decide what type of career you want to have. Because different businesses require different types of characteristics within a leader to get the job done that they need done. For example, the manager of a construction crew needs to have different characteristics than the manager of a Walmart. This topic is, I'm really invested in this topic because I see myself in a leadership position in the future and I want to be the best I can be within the leadership style that I possess. Uh, the three leadership styles, the three main leadership styles work differently for different people and they're successful in different instances and for a variety of bus businesses and organizations. The first organization, the first leadership style that I'm going to talk about is authoritarian leadership style. This leadership style's biggest characteristic is going to be having being very independent and very hands-on. Uh, for for example, Mark Kramer states in his blog in his blog post authoritarian versus authoritative leadership for his blog Kramer Consulting, which he posted on July 30th of 2019, that this leadership style really relies on the leader's opinions and ideas rather than the entire group. This can have a negative impact on the rest of the group because it can make them feel unimportant and make them feel like they don't have a say within the entire task that they've been given. But even though that can have a negative effect, there are also some very good positive effects of this leadership style, like they're very good in fast-paced environments, and they're also very good when it comes to making decisions in a time crunch. A great example of this would be uh, in a group project settings. We've all been in those group project settings and in a group project where one person right before it's due says, oh, I didn't do my, my part, and then the grade reflects badly on everyone. Well, with this leadership style, that most likely wouldn't happen because they're very hands-on and they would get the, pro the problem fixed, they either do it themselves, or they would have made sure that this person did their thing to start with. A great example of a successful, successful example of this leadership style would be Bill Gates with his Microsoft company. The next leadership style is, can be just as effective and successful as authoritarian. Laissez faire is more of a hands off leadership style when it comes to when it comes to leading their group. They focus more on the end result. Of, of a task rather than the process of how it got there. They, this really pushes the members into being in control of their own task and keeping, and keeping themselves accountable for their own task and getting it done. It also requires the leader to have a lot of trust within, within their group because they're not under constant supervision. Then again, this doesn't work for all businesses. It, it won't work very well for a business that has really clear and strict objectives and that they just they want everything done a certain way. Although it does really help other businesses thrive like ad agencies, research facilities, and social media companies because it really allows the members to be creative and successful in their own way. The last leadership style is a happy medium between laissez faire and authoritarian when it comes to leadership styles. The democratic, also known as participative leadership style, requires a leader who is very ready, open for, to, for new ideas and ready to work side by side with the members and group that they're leading. Uh, as 
As John Justile states in A Definition and Illustration of Democratic Leadership for the Human Relations Journal in 1994, he describes his leadership style as distributing responsibility among group membership, empowering group members, and aiding in the group's decision-making process. He, this really describes how they are, how they are really hands-on and they just want to make it a group project. Uh, some great examples of this would be Steve Jobs and also George Washington. Whenever he decided to not run for a third term of presidency, he decided to step down and allow somebody else to take the reins. Looking back at the three main leadership styles of authoritarian, laissez-faire, and democratic, it shows that they can be successful in different instances for a variety of people and a variety of businesses. I challenge you in the future, whenever you're put into a leadership position, to take a step back and figure out what kind of leader you are.